These are John Glenn's ground-based co-pilots, men he knows well, with whom he's trained, and in whose judgment his life is entrusted this day. They are the flight controllers, and from the Mercury Control Center, within view of the launch complex, they make the decisions, issue the commands, that will govern the course of the mission. To these men throughout the flight will flood the facts needed for decision. The scope of their responsibility of the entire operation defies comprehension. Now, this very instant, the countdown for flight continues around the world, on three continents, on islands, in ships and planes, in lands where it's summer and tomorrow is near, in lands where it's winter, and this day is just beginning. Roger, how about you recovering? Oh, the is Roger, CTC, Mercury Control Sirens, go. Nymph Godspeed, John Glenn. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Across Africa, races Friendship 7 at 17,545 miles an hour, 300 miles a minute, four miles for every heartbeat of John Glenn. The first hint of potential disaster. It came when astronaut Cooper relayed a request from Mercury Control, asking Glenn to check the status lights for the capsule's landing impact bag. Glenn reports, status normal. But ground stations are now receiving an ominous chilling signal, an indication that the heat shield on Friendship 7 seems to have come loose. In Mercury Control at Cape Canaveral, a decision must be made, and soon. The signal pulsing down from Friendship 7 indicates still that the heat shield is loose. Could the signal be erroneous? There is no way to tell. But if it's true, then John Glenn could perish in a searing inferno when he plunges back into the atmosphere. The retro rockets that slow the spacecraft and head it back toward Earth are strapped over the shield. If they were left on after retro fire, instead of being jettisoned as in normal reentry, then their straps might hold the shield in place before they burn off. They might possibly save Glenn from the 3,000 degrees of reentry heat until he's deep enough into the atmosphere for its force to hold the shield in place. But the decision must be made soon. We'll give you the countdown uh, for retro sequence time, John. You're looking good. Uh, Roger, we only have five zero seconds to retrograde, over. Uh, that's a firm. I'll give you a mark, 45 mark. California, uh, California, this is Cape Flight. Go ahead, Cape Flight. Uh, we'd like to leave the package on at least through Texas. So keep, tell him to keep his Retro jettison switch off. Uh, John, leave your retro pack on uh, through your pass over Texas. 20 Please. seconds. Right here. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. Roger. Retros are firing. Oh, Roger, baby. Are they ever? It feels like I'm going back toward Hawaii. Texas Capcom Cape Flight. Go ahead, Cape Flight. Go ahead. We have decided to re-enter with the pack on. This is Texas Capcom Freshman 7. We are recommending that you leave the retro package on through the entire re-entry. Uh, this is Friendship 7. Uh, what is the reason for this? Do you have any reason? Over. Well, we're not sure whether or not your landing bag has deployed. Uh, we feel it's far safer to re-enter uh, with the retro package on. Uh, we see no difficulty at this time. 
with John Glenn and Friendship 7 is lost. The furnace-like heat of re-entry has created a barrier of ionization around Friendship 7, holding all voice communication. Uh, 7, this is Cape Transmitting Blind. Your IP is within one mile of the uprange destroyer. Voice call is Steelhead. Steelhead is the code name for the destroyer Noah, waiting to recover Friendship 7. But John Glenn uh, cannot hear the message. Right around 443, flight. It was about on time. Keep talking, Al. Uh, Friendship 7, this is Cape, over. Uh, Friendship 7, this is Cape. How do you read, over? Uh, oh, Roger, reading you loud and clear. How are you doing? My condition is good, but that was a real fireball, boy. I had great chunks of that retro pack breaking off all the way through. team challenge space and they won <laughs>